Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Combs Design. Today I'm obviously not in the shop, I am here in my office, and instead of doing a project video, I'm going to do a series of tutorial videos on how to use the free version of SketchUp online. This is a super useful tool and one that I use very often. There are two programs that I use for computer-aided design or CAD, and these are the free version of SketchUp and Fusion 360. And they both have very different use cases, in my opinion, for plans and project and furniture drawings that aren't accurate down to, you know, super fractional of an inch measurements, I use SketchUp. It's great for things like that. It's useful, it's quick, it's intuitive. For highly technical drawings, for things like a 3D print or, you know, a CNC operation, I'm gonna use Fusion 360. Now, I am no expert in SketchUp, but coming out of my you know, beginner phases and seeing all the pitfalls that I ran into, I really think this will be a useful series. There'll be small, bite-sized chunks that anybody can get into SketchUp immediately and start making stuff. All right, so we are here in the homepage of SketchUp. The very first thing you wanna do is click Create New, and we're gonna use the simple template, Feet and Inches. Click on that. And first off, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the environment. Up here you have your file menu, which has your normal things, you know, new, open, save as. Here we can click and save a project. We're not gonna do that right now. Over here on the left, you have your toolbar. These are all the different tools you can use to create stuff. And over here on the right, we have a bunch of different options that we'll get into at a much later date, but it's the 3D warehouse to access, uh, you know, other models people have made, changing the textures, changing the views, and you can even change how accurate SketchUp is. By default, SketchUp is accurate down to a 16th of an inch, and uh, you can change that, and I'll show you how to change that later, but right now, we're going to keep it simple. There are four tools that we're going to learn in this first uh, lesson that I are just super useful. The first one is just your pointer. It's this select tool right here, and you can also hit the space bar and it brings you that tool. On the left here, when I hit space or any other key, you'll see that uh, the key pops up in the bottom left so you can keep track of what I'm doing on the keyboard. Another area to look at is here on the bottom right. It's where it says measurements currently. Here's where we will type in defining values, and you'll see how that's used in a minute. So we start with our select tool. We can click this person that is automatically loaded for scale into the model, and we'll go ahead and hit delete. The next tool that we'll use is down here. It is the pan and orbit tool. You can also get to this. If we're on our select tool, you can click O, and that will quickly get you to this tool, and this lets you hover and move around objects. You can also click and hold the shift key, and it brings up this hand tool, and it allows you to pan and click and drag around. Next, we will use the line tool. You can either click here on the left where there's this pencil, or if we were in our select tool, you can click L for line. The very first thing we want to do is make a box. And there are tools to do this, but I'm gonna show you the long way and you'll see how this integrates later. So first thing I'll do is I will click here at the axis or where all the axes meet, and this is called the origin. Right here we have our blue axis, which is our Z axis or our low to high axis. We have this green axis here, which is our Y axis or our front to back. And then we have the red axis here, which is our X or our left to right, if you want to think about it like that. And you'll see, we can click here in the origin and we start dragging out a line. Now, when you're working in three dimensional space, you don't exactly know where this line is going. Like, you don't know if this line is going flat and back out into space. You don't know if it's going up. And it can be really hard to tell depending on your view. Luckily, here in SketchUp, you can see these lines snap to the different axes. 
So the first line we want to make is from the origin and along the green axis. And you'll see we are snapped on the axis here. And in my keyboard, I can simply hit the number five. And when I do this, this is going to define this line as five inches long. So I will hit five. And down in the bottom right, where I told you earlier we would be defining measurements, you see it says length and five. And we're working in inches, so that means that line is five inches. We hit enter. And if we zoom in, just using our scroll wheel, you can see that it has placed this line. The line tool is still selected after finishing your line, and this is useful because we want to make a second line. This we are going to put in line with our red axis, and when we get near where that axis is, it will snap this line to be parallel with the red axis. We want this line to be 10 inches long, so once again I'll type in 10. Down in the bottom right you, said, you see where it says 10 inches. And I'll hit enter. Now we want to continue closing up this box so we will put a 5 inch line here along the green axis. Hit 5. And then we will drag this over to connect to where we started the origin and we'll just click. And you can see we've created a face here. SketchUp automatically takes connecting lines and creates a face between them. This becomes really useful when we want to use the fourth tool we're going to learn about in this lesson, and it's the push-pull tool. We select this by hitting P, and it's also here on the left side in our toolbar. When we take this tool, we can hover over any face and in this instance, you'll see uh, our, our face turns and gets this dotted area over it. We can click, and we can pull up, or we can push down. In this case, we want to make a simple box that's, let's say, four inches tall. Once again, I can define this by entering four. You see on the bottom right, the distance of the push-pull is four inches. And I hit enter. And just like that, we have created a really simple box. And this will truly be the building block for everything that we are going to do in SketchUp from here on out. Being able to make and define polygons is really at the heart of SketchUp. And in the next lessons, we will take this box and we will start to shape it and mold it into other things. Once you understand how these four tools work, and then we're going to add in two more in the next couple of lessons, you can really see how to make literally anything. And then once we get past that, I'll show you some easier ways to do things and some more advanced tools to do more advanced shapes and define some different things. Thanks for checking out this episode of Combs Design. I'll see you guys on the next one.